When will you get pregnant? A barren wife. Just get out. On my birthday of all days, why do I have to hear such things? I don't care who it is, as long as I can give birth. Find someone younger. My mother-in-law, Isabella, sees me as nothing more than a tool to produce an heir. It's not me who's infertile, and it's frustrating that nobody will listen. I wanted to tell my husband, you're the one who can't have children. My name is Mila. I'm 30 years old. I met my husband Oliver while working at a hotel. Oliver, the only son of the classic hotel, came to learn the hospitality techniques of urban hotels, which the classic hotel lacked. In my sixth year working at the hotel, highly praised by my bosses for my customer service skills, I was assigned to train him. He was the same age as me, and at first, I worried if I could handle being a mentor. He too seems puzzled by the urban hotel service, different from the classic hotel. Yet, Oliver, quick to learn, was soon indistinguishable from a mentor, excelling at his job in just a month. As days pass, I found myself drawn to him. He seemed interested in me too, and after three months, he asked me out. Oliver was here for a year to learn, and eventually he had to return to his family's classic hotel. Will we have to break up then? I thought sadly about the impending day. But my worries were unnecessary. I can't just break up and leave. If you're okay with it, will you come with me? He confessed, and I nodded yes on the verge of tears. I failed in marriage once before when I was younger. Is that okay with you? He said, looking a bit downcast. I answered, trying to push away my slight hesitation. I don't mind at all. Despite a momentary doubt, I chose to look beyond it. Initially, my parents were opposed due to his divorce history, but they eventually gave in to my insistence. His family owned a very famous, long-established hotel. His father, Ethan, was the manager, and Isabella, his mother, the deputy manager, along with a large staff of waitresses and chefs. I wondered if I could really live up to being the wife of the son of such a prestigious classic hotel. My husband Oliver seemed to be in a manager and training position, slowly taking over responsibilities from Ethan. I thought I'd be learning from Isabella, maybe becoming an apprentice landlady, but that was far from what happened. Mila, you should just stay home and be a housewife. I want to see my grandchild soon. Isabella said. Her words made me think, so I just need to have a child? A vague anxiety I had been feeling started to take a clear shape. We began living in Oliver's family's main house, a bit away from the hotel. Oliver's behavior had clearly changed. When I tried to snuggle up to him in bed at night after his hotel work, he would often refuse, saying, I'm tired, just let me sleep. His everyday demeanor also changed drastically. He was harsh, a complete stranger compared to when we were dating. About six months later, Isabella asked, Mila, no child yet? Oliver complied with my efforts, albeit reluctantly, but there were still no signs of pregnancy. Not yet. It's a blessing, so there's no use rushing. I replied, feeling increasingly wary. Recently, Isabella kept asking, no child yet? And, show me my grandchild's face, ending with a stern, we need an heir for our classic hotel, you must have a child soon. I wanted a child too, but if it's not happening, what can I do? It's unfair that I'm the only one being blamed. Still, I thought I would eventually become pregnant. A year passed, but no signs of pregnancy. Still can't make it happen? What a useless wife. What do you think you're doing as a housewife? Isabella's scoldings became harsher every day. Why am I even here? I felt lost and deeply saddened. Oliver, whom I thought would be my ally, joins Isabella in blaming me. 
Hey, Mila, why don't you see a doctor and get checked out? Isabella suddenly suggested. Indeed, it was a good idea. If there was a cause, I wanted to know it. Knowing might lead to pregnancy and escape from this treatment. Okay, I'll make an appointment at the hospital tomorrow and go with Oliver. When I said that with a faint hope, Why does Oliver need to go? Are you suggesting he has a problem? Go by yourself. Isabella retorted fiercely. No, fertility tests require couples to go together, I replied, but she quickly interrupted. The problem is definitely with you. There's no need for Oliver to go. She continued vehemently. I just agreed with a yes, understood, to calm the situation. But I thought I should at least discuss it with Oliver and waited to talk to him when he returned. Why do I have to go with you? Oliver responded disinterested. I gently suggested, well, we don't know where the issue lies, right? Let's both get tested. It's definitely your problem. I don't need to go to know that. Oliver concluded. Both Isabella and Oliver were so certain, but how could they be? Am I the only one to blame? But why are they so confident? I wondered. Living in the countryside near Oliver's family home, it took over an hour by bus to reach a major hospital. I managed to book an appointment at a gynecology clinic for fertility issues, but it was scheduled for the following week. When I mentioned this to Isabella, she scornfully asked, Why can't you get tested immediately? But I knew not everything would go as she wanted. The appointments are quite full, I vaguely replied. I've never been fond of hospitals or tests, so I wasn't too eager myself. On the day of the test, the doctor was surprised Oliver wasn't with me. Shouldn't he be here? I thought the same. Without testing both, it's hard to know where the problem lies. They started with a blood test to check my hormonal balance, followed by an ultrasound to examine my womb, and use a contrast agent for a fallopian tube test. It was an exhausting, all-day process. Is fertility testing always this tough? I wondered. There's no abnormality here, the doctor said after reviewing the results, which was a relief. We can't say for certain without testing your husband, but if intercourse is regular, we can't definitively say you're the cause. Knowing I wasn't solely to blame was somewhat reassuring, but getting Oliver to come would be difficult. I tentatively asked, Is there a way to check if my husband might be the cause without him coming? The doctor replied, Yes, come in the day after intercourse. We can do a postcoital test, examining what remains in your womb. A ray of hope seemed to shine through. Then, I'll make an appointment for my next visit. Thank you. Leaving the hospital, I headed to the bus stop. While waiting, I saw a man resembling Oliver cross the street. What? Oliver? Here? I thought he might have come out of concern for me, which made me happy. I decided to follow him discreetly. It was indeed my husband Oliver. Just as I was about to approach, something unbelievable happened. A young woman approached Oliver, and they walked off arms linked. My world went dark. Seeing Oliver with another woman was devastating. Holding back the urge to collapse right there, I followed them. They disappeared into what looked like a hotel. I couldn't believe it and sat down on the sidewalk, overwhelmed. When I got home, Isabella called as if she had been waiting. How did the test go? What's wrong with you? Her accusatory tone echoed in my ears. The image of Oliver entering the hotel with that woman haunted me. The one at fault is your son, I wanted to retort. I was close to tears. No, there were no abnormalities. I barely managed to reply. They mentioned it might be due to chronic fatigue or stress, I added. 
Isabella scoffed. Ugh, fatigue? Stress? I've given you the leisure of being a housewife, and this is how you respond. Just make a child quickly. If you can't, we might as well divorce. I was too despondent to fight back, even though it might have been easier to let it all end. Oliver didn't come home that night. The next morning, he likely went to work as usual. I started the day feeling like I wanted to disappear. The night before the follow-up fertility appointment, I reluctantly initiated intimacy with Oliver. Despite his usual excuses of being too tired, he surprisingly accepted. I couldn't forgive him for being with that young woman, but I couldn't endure being oppressed anymore. That night, I put on my best act to welcome Oliver. The next day at the hospital, the doctor informed me, The infertility issue is on your husband's side. All the emotions I've been holding back overflowed, and I cried. It's not my fault after all. I thought, crying freely. Crying made me feel a bit better. I decided to talk to Isabella and Oliver to make them understand the situation. As expected, Isabella was waiting for me at the house. Welcome back. How did it go? Is there a treatment? As I remained silent, don't just stand there, say something. A wife who can't have children might as well leave. Isabella infuriated said, No, I don't need treatment. The problem lies elsewhere, I said. At this, Isabella yelled even louder, Are you saying it's Oliver's fault? That's impossible because... At that moment, Oliver arrived and said, My fault? What are you talking about? I already have a child. I was stunned. A child? With whom? Oliver calmly replied, Didn't I tell you I was divorced? I had a child with my ex-wife, but she took the child when she left. Isabella listening to this, Yes, that's right. We lost our grandchild to that woman. How frustrating. Spat out bitterly. So, there's no issue with me, understand? Oliver added. I finally understood their attitude. A barren wife is no use to me. A younger woman might get pregnant quickly. Oliver coldly remarked, Today is my birthday. How can you say such things? I couldn't help but shout. Oh, birthday. Right, you're 30 now. Pretty old. I can't deal with that, he dismissed. The Oliver who once celebrated my birthday was gone. If you can find someone else to have a child, then bring them here, Isabella said. I don't care anymore. I felt completely defeated. Suppressing the urge to scream, I quietly said. Overwhelmed by sadness, I packed my things that day and left Oliver's house. My parents welcomed me warmly when I returned home, their kindness soothing my wounded heart. On a sunny Sunday, while walking near my parents' house, I bumped into Lucas, a classmate from high school. He had been a top student and went to a prestigious university in the city, but returned to work locally after graduation. He was smart and athletic, almost a leader in our class. I had admired him too. We spent hours reminiscing about high school, losing track of time. We exchanged contact information, and later that night, he asked me out. On the next holiday, he invited me to a movie. Hesitantly, I agreed. As we walked side by side after the movie, he shared his life story. He had a girlfriend in university, but broke up after graduation. So, he's not married. He wouldn't have asked me out otherwise, I thought. Walking beside my high school crush, I couldn't help but feel embarrassed, despite my age. After being invited to several meals and movies, he asked me out. I decided to reveal that I had failed in my marriage and had returned home. He looked surprised at first, but then said earnestly, I see you've been through a lot, Mila. I'm sorry if I was insensitive. 
I quickly responded, I appreciate that, but I've had my share of hardships. He suddenly stood up apologizing. He's truly sincere, watching his gesture, I thought. But then I remembered how I once thought Oliver was impressive. My judgment hasn't always been reliable. However, as he continued to speak earnestly, I couldn't help but burst out laughing. When was the last time I laughed like this? He said, Don't laugh, that's rude. But seeing him like that made me laugh even more. Thank you. Sorry. I was laughing, but before I knew it, tears were streaming down my cheeks. He panicked. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry. Forget it. And bowed again. It's okay. It's just that I haven't laughed like this in a while. Don't worry about it. I said with a smile. As time passed and my heart healed a bit, I accepted his offer to date. I believed things might work out with him, unlike my painful past with Oliver. Then, after about a year of dating, he proposed. His acceptance and kindness were so comforting. Eventually, I became pregnant. After struggling so much with Oliver, I was almost taken aback by how easily I conceived with my new partner. We had a beautiful baby girl. While holding my child, I remembered Oliver. I didn't want to think about him, but if the test results I knew were true, whose child was the one he had with his ex-wife? Considering Isabella's fury, it wouldn't be surprising if his ex-wife had left alone with the child. The thought of his ex-wife, who supposedly left with the child, lingered in my mind. I hadn't spoken to anyone about the evidence I had found. Although it was a part of my past I should leave behind, the unresolved feelings nagged at me. I couldn't fully enjoy my current happiness, realizing it was because of this unresolved issue. I wanted to confront Oliver and Isabella with the truth about the infertility. I felt a need to make them taste a bit of the pain I had endured. That anger resurfaced, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized there was nothing I could do alone. I suddenly thought, if I can meet Oliver's ex-wife and learn the truth, it might clarify things. I immediately hired a private investigator. Soon, I learned from the investigator that she lived not far from where I currently resided, and she had remarried and built a happy family. Gathering my courage, I called her. Hello, is this Charlotte? My name is Mila. There was a sense of bewilderment on the other end. I have some questions about your ex-husband, Oliver. You know him, right? She almost hung up in panic. Wait, I suffered horribly at the hands of him and his mother. I've been gathering evidence for revenge. Can we meet? After hearing my story, she agreed. We arranged to meet at a nearby cafe. She arrived with a boy. He didn't resemble Oliver. Noticing me studying the child, she said, Actually, this boy is my current husband's child. I was surprised, and she started to share her story. Oliver had a habit of cheating, even during their marriage. Like me, she was blamed by Isabella for not having children. The constant berating and stress wore her down mentally. Unable to bear it anymore, she admitted that she had involuntarily developed a relationship with her current husband whom she met by chance. She became pregnant and gave birth, and at that time it was unclear whose child it was. Weakened mentally and unable to cope with her guilt, she initiated the divorce and went to her current husband, eventually remarrying. Hearing this, I suggested a plan. Initially shocked, she agreed to join me in repaying those who had wronged us. We consulted our husbands and decided to stay at Oliver's hotel, pretending to be recent mom friends. Our husbands made the reservations, and the day finally arrived. The familiar scenery brought back painful memories. Stealing myself, we entered the hotel. Isabella greeted us politely, 
but her expression changed drastically when she saw our faces. Her look was not that of the deputy manager of the classic hotel. It made sense. The ex-wife had returned, bringing her child and her new husband with her. After being shown to our rooms, I said to Lucas, I owe a lot to the deputy manager here, and I want to thank her in person. Why don't you take a walk for a bit? Lucas, holding the child, went for a walk with Charlotte's husband. The waitress who came to our room recognized me and was surprised. It's been a while. Could you please call the deputy manager for me? I asked and she agreed, then left. Soon, Isabel and Oliver arrived together. Seeing Charlotte, Isabella immediately shouted, Give back my grandchild, you fool! What? Your grandchild? There's no such thing, I said mockingly. Oliver, red-faced with anger, yelled, What are you talking about? She took away the child we finally had. That's where you're wrong. You don't have any children. Don't you understand? I retorted with a hint of triumph. I have a daughter now with my current husband. Isabella tried to speak, but I continued. You're sterile, Oliver. The infertility was your fault, not mine. You're the one at fault. Oliver's face turned ashen, a stark contrast to his earlier anger. Isabella, although trying to maintain her composure, couldn't hide her shock. No grandchild? We can't have a grandchild. What about the hotel's heir? Isabella muttered to herself. Eventually, she stood up unsteadily, looked at us with a blank expression and said, This is all your fault. If it weren't for you two, everything would have worked out. It's all over now. With that, she left the room with unsteady steps. When our husbands returned, Charlotte and I told them to rest in the room, and we walked around the hotel and outdoor pool with the children. The waitresses, seeing us with the children, seemed to be talking. Apparently, we were known as wives who left because they couldn't have children. Now, seeing us with our children seemed to surprise them. Charlotte and I fell to years of pent-up frustration dissipate. Oliver's infidelity and divorce history quickly became the talk of the town. In the countryside, bad news spreads fast. Oliver had been advancing a marriage arrangement with a daughter of a major hotel's president, but it fell through. He had hopes for financial support and management assistance from that union. A political marriage in this day and age? It seems unbelievable, yet such things still happened. I heard that relying on that marriage for funds, they had started renovating the hotel and now were struggling with finances, burdened with a huge debt. I later learned through online sources that the once bustling classic hotel, known for its tradition, had become just an old, unremarkable hotel with dwindling customers. The once lively place was now eerily quiet, as negative reviews quickly spread. It seems that a business resting on tradition alone, managed by someone who neither cared for their family nor respected people, was destined to fail. Charlotte, whom I met through this incident, and I continue to maintain close family ties. And now, I am expecting another child. I already have a daughter, so I'm hoping for a boy this time. Thinking about it fills me with excitement. Charlotte is also expecting her second child soon. Both of us suffered at the hands of the same man. But now we are truly happy.